فعنا وزدنا علما اللهم اجعل عمالنا خالصة لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك آمين يا رب العالمين I greet each and every one of the universal greeting of love and peace السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We start off with the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we praise due to him. We ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send abundant salutation on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again for all his favors and gifts that he has bestowed upon us. Allowing us to have woken up this morning, allowing us to have a roof of our heads. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are safe with our families, we're able to see, we're able to hear, we're able to speak. Our heart beats without the permission, alhamdulillah. And so many favors that we can continue mentioning, alhamdulillah. Once again, we realign ourselves with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with that beautiful dua that he made when you woke up in the morning. Saying, alhamdulillah, illadhi ahyana upraiz is you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until us life, upraiz is you to him. After taking us away, by laying the shore, and to him is our return, and may our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be a beautiful one. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Khair. Hope everyone is well. Um, I think I only saw you about maybe two or three weeks ago. And um, we still busy with Surah Qalam. We're in the beginning verses of Surah Qalam, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll get uh, into it immediately, inshallah. So we can do a screen Okay, so these are the first few ayat um, that we've covered, I think, up until verse number five. We'll do a very quick recap to get us into perspective as to what is being discussed. And then we will we will start with the next few ayat, inshallah. SubhanAllah, we are on the doorstep of the month of Ramadan, the greatest of months for a believer. And there's nothing better that can be engaged in and then trying to understand and learn the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shah Ramadan al-Ladi Zila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran has been revealed. This is the month of the Quran celebrating the greatest means of guidance to me and you. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about himself as being the most merciful of Rahman, and then a description and reason as to why he is a Rahman, is the one that has taught the Quran. So our focus, mashallah, has been the Quran. And so in Ramadan, that focus in inshallah, an increased desire to connect to the Quran on various levels. Uh, many of us go through a process where they read the Quran. Uh, and they make the khatams one, khatam two, khatams, and so on and so forth. Um, but as we've come to know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ramadan al-Ladi unzila fihi al-Quran, then it has come as a guidance. The objective of the Quran being sent down is as far as to connect on that level, we'll be taking benefit and guidance from it. And may Ramadan be that reset for us where we're going to focus more, even more than what we are currently doing so, uh, in terms of the the meanings and the definitions and the, the understanding of the Quran and taking benefit from it, I mean. I see somebody's um, currently busy writing on the screen. Um, you can just uh, request them to, to please not write on the screen, it will be appreciated. Okay, so the first five verses that we've covered, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَعُوْتُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نون والقلم وما يسرون نون, one of the abbreviated letters that now knows 
its meaning except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ya'lamu al-murada illa Allah wal qalam and by the pain wa ma yafsurun and that which they it writes. And we've gone into some important detail about this. Uh, the previous lessons were recorded. Please make a reference to it. But everything has been documented. Everything has been documented in the, the local mahfud. Whatever Allah subhanahu when Allah created, the first thing that he created, and he says, right, he told the pen, right. Everything from the beginning of time until the end of time has been documented. Thereafter, we have the malaika sitting on our shoulders, and they, ma yalfi min qawlin illa ladayhi raqibun atid. A person doesn't even utter a word except raqibun atid is there, and they're documenting. Mm -hmm. this, this is an important, very important concept for us in terms of our khira and in terms of our belief and assisting and facilitating our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was a reminder to the Quraysh. The Quraysh were very stubborn. The Quraysh were uh, causing harm to Rasulullah. Um, they were saying things. They were trying to attack him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them and reminds us about this reality. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks directly to Rasulullah. Indeed, you by the mercy or by the ni'mah, by the bounty of your Lord is not majnoon. You are not one that has been affected in such a way that you are now mad. This was one of the things that they were throwing at Rasulullah. So he's mad. He's a madman. Do not follow him. And, and all these, these weird and wonderful things that they were saying. And indeed, for you is a ajr la, la ajr, la mutawqi, there's a reward ghayra mamnoon, that is, it does not, will not come to an end. And that is the reward for every difficulty that we go through, Rasulullah says, even to the extent when we get pricked. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us. Either he's removing our sins or he's raising our rank in Jannah. And this is again a reminder to us. This was a comfort for Rasulullah and a reminder to us. وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And did you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are upon a khuluk, a character that is عظيم, that is great. We went into some detail about this, about the importance of us continuously working on our character. Rasulullah reached that level. It's now our turn to work towards refining our character, the closest to Rasulullah and death. The one with the best character, as he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah has told us that uh, the, the the reason and the purpose that he was sent to complete uh, the moral character, the standards of moral character. And so if this is what Rasulullah came to do, may we then latch on to it. Very importantly, we often focus on the sunnah. When we say the sunnah of Rasulullah, then we focus on certain actions. You know, um, if I grow my beard, I'm following a sunnah when I use the miswak, I'm following a sunnah. When I do my two rakat of the door, I'm following my sunnah. But his greatest sunnah, his greatest sunnah was his internal um, struggle against, against any negatives. That was Rasulullah's greatest, greatest sunnah that we need to follow. Reformation of character. Continuously refining himself in front of his Lord such that Rasulullah is regarded as the best of Allah subhanahu wa creation. And this is the sunnah that we need to continuously work on. And so this particular beginning ayat was in response to the Quraysh that were attacking Rasulullah s.a.w. But a beautiful reminder for us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So, so soon, sa, so, soon uh, the, the senior is for mustaqbal, sofa, fa sa tu balsiru, Wa you will see ruin. So soon you will see. Wa you will see ruin, and they will see. You get ruqya. Ruqya is to see as well. Ra'a, and then you get basira. Basira is insight. So soon you will have insight into the reality of your your efforts and your actions. Wa you will see and they will also have insight into that reality. We can see one thing. One thing, sometimes things doesn't look so nice. Sometimes things doesn't look so gloomy. Sometimes things look like it's going wrong and going bad. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has insight into, into those difficulties that you're going through. And there are various examples of how a person goes through a difficulty, but that difficulty is actually good for him. Indeed, with that difficulty, the ease comes. A beautiful story of Hidr. Salam and Musa Salam when Musa Salam travels with Hidr and they go through that process getting onto the boat, the Hidr Salam breaking the boat, the boy that eventually is killed and the wall that is built up 
And at the end of all of this, um, Hidr has to explain to Nabi Musa why he did those things. And it was only to the benefit of those that were perhaps going through the, the difficulty. The boat that's broken was a difficult thing for the people. But they were installed. So, Fasatu Basiru, why you Basiru? Fasatu Basiru, you will soon have insight and they will have insight. This particular verse was also in the reference to, to the Battle of Badr, where the Battle of Badr was 300, 313 approximately against 1,000 strong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them insight into who is in control. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control, even though they were 1,000 strong against 300, only 313, not even well prepared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gave them victory. And so these are beautiful insights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Rasulullah victory in this dunya through his efforts, even though they were continuously barring him, continuously going against him, continuously ca causing him harm, continuously putting him through difficulty. Allah showed him victory in this world. More importantly, the victory of the year after. And beautiful surah, as we know, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fath ila ja'a nasrullahi wal fath. At coming to the end of the life of Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa says, and إِذَا جَاءَ when you see, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ الله, oh, sorry, when comes the Nasr, the assistance of Allah, and the, the complete victory. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ and you see people entering the deen of Allah in, in groups. Rasulullah made effort, Rasulullah made through difficulty. This entire surah starts out by speaking about the difficulties that Rasulullah went through. Because of his efforts, they called him mad. They called him a magician. They called him a soothsayer. They called him a whole lot of different names. And Allah subhanahu wa comes to him. And Allah subhanahu says, don't worry, you are going to be given the necessary necessary insight as to, as to what is to happen. And so as a means of consolation for us, comfort for us, sometimes we make certain decisions in our life that for the better. We want to change uh, certain things that we are doing. We want to change the way we are doing things. Uh, we want to change the way we're raising our family. And many a times it's our own family that are the first ones to, to go against us. The first ones to speak out, the first ones to create difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa says, you know, with steadfastness, with continuously journeying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through that difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show us something greater. This was directed as Rasulullah Sallallahu and as recipients or as being part of the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and being recipients of this Quran, it is directed to us as well. That difficulty that you're going through, hold fast. The difficulty that you go through, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is facilitating a path of ease for you. The, the story of Nabi Yusuf that went through so much difficulty, but his end result was something that was great. That was something amazing. And so with Ramadan on our doorstep, generally, generally, this is an opportunity for, for all of us, for all believers. But again, the objective of Ramadan is to create that, that consistency within our lives. And so sometimes we, we make that change. I'm not too sure if in our last session we spoke about that this month, the month of Sha'aban being the month in which the, the Qibla changed. The Qibla initially was to Baytul Maqdis, to Jerusalem. And Rasulullah had a yearning and desire to face Makkah al Mukarramah. And it was in Masjid Qiblatayn, Qiblatayn, the two Qiblas, Rasulullah was facing a direction and all the reverse were revealed and Rasulullah changed the direction. And the Sahaba changed the direction as well. And even because of that, the Jews started tormenting the Sahaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, the foolish ones are going to say, what has turned them from the direction that they were on? And through the tormenting, the Sahaba started, started feeling concerned. Okay, but now our previous salah was accepted. What's happening now? And so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforted them. Likewise, sometimes when we change our qibla, perhaps you know, not the, the first but in terms of decisions that we are going to make for ourselves, decisions that we're making for our family, 
means we get people tormenting us, we get people departing us, we get people say having people say say stuff to us. And sometimes those things can can get us down. But Rasulullah went through the greatest of difficulties when his own uncle would speak out against him and mock him and make fun of him. And even when his son, uh, Rasulullah's son passed on, his uncle was celebrating uh, that. That Batara Muhammad, that indeed uh, the lineage of Muhammad وسلم, has been cut off. Imagine that type of difficulty. I said, You will see, you will see, and they will, and they will see. They will be given that, that particular insight. And so we make that throughout the difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us that, he, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the openings, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the benefits and the, the uh, you know, the, the, the rewards of our striving in this world and more importantly in the, in the year after. And then the next verse it speaks about be a yikum, which of you be a ye be a yikum al maftoon, which of you is al maftoon. So the word comes from the word fitna, fitna means a trial, maftoon, maftoon and mafaul. So the one that is afflicted, afflicted with a trial, afflicted with a difficulty in this context of a year, uh, afflicted with the madness that they are, are is ascribing, ascribing to Rasulullah So soon you will know and they will know which of you, whether it's Rasulullah or which, whether it's yourselves that have been afflicted, have been tested with this form of, of madness and insanity. And not understanding the reality of of this world, so there's a, a nice example of the the ismu maf'ul of the day maftoon maf'ul from the from the from the rootlets of fitna. So again, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaking directly to Rasulullah Sallam as well as the, the, the Quraysh. Which of you? You will soon see which of you are of those that are affected with any of the claims that you are. Of speaking to, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest trial, بِأَيْكُمُ maftoon maftoon from fitna, and again in this context speaking about, about Rasulullah being being a madman. But the greatest trial that one will face, the greatest fitna one will face, is the fitna trial of the day of Qiyamah. That is the greatest, that is the greatest trial that anyone could ever, ever face. Standing in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, presenting uh, the actions in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anyone that was was went contrary to the teachings of, of the Quran, the teachings of Rasulullah what do they stand with uh, what do they present what will be the means of comfort and protection, various hadiths speak about how the Quran will be an intercessor for the reader on the day of Qiyamah a person who doesn't have any Quran in their lives, what will be a means of intercession for them? And so, this is, is some of the insights that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about over here. Fasad tu basiru, wa yu basirun, bi ayyikum maftu, which of you are truly going to be afflicted with these trials? And again, the greatest trial being the trial of standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and qiyamah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to understand this reality that that our preparation in this dunya, our traversing in this world, our effort in this world, uh, that its sole purpose should be for that presentation. Our sole purpose should be for that presentation in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our minds, our minds to be adjusted for that, that role, that purpose. And thus, you know, for the past few months, for Ramadan, past 11 months, last year Ramadan, our focus sometimes has been shifted to everything else, the dunya and so on and so forth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan changes that dynamic for us. Uh, Ramadan, when the month of Ramadan comes, the doors of Jannah opened up, and the, the doors of Jahannam was locked, and the shayateen, the, the big, the big jinns, the, the ones that give around the orders and, and so on and so forth, they are locked up, so no orders are being given um, for an entire month, the dynamic of the month is changed, just for us to, to realign ourselves, he's not going to have this 
HRT the whispering in our ears to get us to do wrong, um, the rewards of the month of Ramadan is increased such that if you do a sunnah, you get the reward of a fard, and if you do a fard, you get the reward of a, of 70 faraid. So, your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has locked is going to be locking the doors of Jannah, opening the doors of Jannah, locking Shayatin up and then rewarding us um, in multiple, in multiple forms so that our mindset is focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our mindset is focused on refining ourselves and we don't have that external influence of Shaytan. We don't have it. Again, maftoon. through this process, we can, we can prepare ourselves for that day standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, and I think it's important to say this, that the month of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, the, the objective and the end goal of it is not solely to fast, to stay away from food and drink. Rasulullah says, Man lam, whomsoever does not leave of qawla zur, false speech, lies, incorrect, incorrect statements and incorrect testimonies, wala amala bihi and, and evil actions Allah doesn't need that person to leave off his food and drink okay so this is very important for us to understand going into this month of Ramadan staying away from food staying away from drink staying away from uh, our relations with our spouse um, that's not the sole objective Allah doesn't need us to stay away from food and drink if we don't understand the purpose of the Ramadan, Ramadan which is our refinement so that we can become more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that certain things that we have in our life and that are doing that we can rid ourselves of all those bad qualities and bad elements that's in our life. And for the entire month, start putting things in place that's going to assist us for the rest of the year. And, and with the month of Ramadan being on our doorstep, this is something that we need to work towards, inshallah. Uh, the next verse, Surah 7, Inna Rabbaka, indeed, Inna Rabbaka, your Lord. So that we know that the, the concept of Inna, um, we have Kana, we have Inna. And then Kana has certain effects on the words, and Inna has a, the opposite effect. You know, Inna um, places the, the word coming after the Inhalat al Nasb, and thus you see the word Rabba, Rabba. And Rabba is the ismu inna, and thus it has the, the fatha of the halat nasb. Inna Rabbaka, indeed your Lord. Emphasis, indeed your Lord, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, huwa a'lam, huwa, he is a'lam, a'lamu, a'lamu. Uh, this concept of the a'lam, um, when it's placed in, in, in this form, it is, it is, um, it is a, a particular seerah where it's showing, um, in terms of degrees of comparison, uh, does anyone remember what the Arabic concept is over there? A'lam, Allah subhanahu wa is more knowledgeable. Anyone remember the Arabic concept, what the term is when, when Allah subhanahu wa uses these types of phrases? A'lam, more knowledgeable, most knowledgeable. Degrees of comparison, trap of halakin. But what's the Arabic concept? Uh, is, uh, anyone want to try? Assalamu alaikum, Maulana. Wa alaikum salam, wa barakatuh. Is it Sira to Tafdil? Sira to Tafdil, mashallah. Excellent, excellent. Sira to Tafdil. So, Sira to Tafdil is basically. Um, like I mentioned, degree, degrees of comparison. So you could have the word good and then you can have better. Hassan and then Ahsan. Allah subhanahu wa a person has knowledge, but Allah subhanahu is most knowledgeable. So again, the, 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 the sentence is very intensified in terms of it starting with inna, indeed, your Lord, very personal. It's personalized directly to Rasulullah. He is a'lam, he is more knowledgeable. Biman with the one who dalla is astray and from sabilihi his path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most knowledgeable of who is astray from his path. Wa huwa a'lam. Wa and huwa. He is a'lam. Again, Surah Al-Taftil. More knowledgeable, most knowledgeable. Bil muhtadin. With those 
that are argued. All these concepts, all these statements, everything that is being said here, it's just it's just uh, conjecture, things that they are saying. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directing these words to Rasulullah so making it very personalized. And again, an extension to us. An extension to us. Allah knows who is guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who it, who it is that is misguided. We put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very importantly, Allah subhanahu also says, فَلَا تُزَكِّي فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Sorry, فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't purify yourself. Don't sanctify yourself. Don't put yourself on a pedestal and claim that you are someone that is guided. That's in the hands of Allah subhanahu but in terms of your striving, in terms of your efforts, in terms of your doing and people's debarring you and people speaking bad about you and people's calling your names and people's creating difficulty that know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most knowledgeable about who is guided and who is not. Okay. This is in the, in the realm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do our part. We follow the teachings of the Quran and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And beyond that, we put our trust in Allah. Everything must be done with sincerity. Everything must be done with sincerity. That path that we are trading, it's something that has already been, been laid out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Qalam, the Qalam that has been, has been written. We just need to continue steadfastness. Continue, 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 continue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate guide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who is misguided and who is guided. And it's at this moment that we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We turn to him. We ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his gaze on us, that he looks at us and he listens to us. And we say, Ya Allah, make us of the muftadeen. Make us of those that are guided. And again, the beauty of Surah Al-Fatiha, that we have to recite the minimum of 17 times a day in our salah, is that we ask Allah, Ihdina, Oh Allah, you guide us. Make us of those that are muftad, that are guided. Hidina surat al-mustaqim, to that straight path. And a beautiful reminder for us uh, to do some, some, some re-looking at the surah Fatiha uh, in terms of its meaning. There's a conversation that happens between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where whenever we say a verse that Allah responds in the month of Ramadan, now we're going to focus more on our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our salah. We're going to stand in Tarawih salah, try to get the benefit of the meanings of the Quran and especially Surah Fatiha. Don't allow it that Surah Fatiha is being read so many times, 20 rakats at night, and we're missing, we're missing the the, the conversation between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're missing the meanings behind it. Yes, it's being repeated so much, but allow it to fix your heart. It allow it to, to, to change your mind. It allow, allow this, the, because you are a student of Quran, allow it, the effects of it being recited every night so many times, allow it to show on your limbs and in your life. People must want to know what is different about this person. What is it that's driving this person? And the only thing that will be driving is Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most knowledgeable who is on the path and who is not on the path. But our, our reliance is on Allah and our du'as are by Allah and we ask of Allah and we beg of Allah. And so the next verse, very importantly, after all this, this entire build-up of Rasulullah having great character, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing who's on the path and who's not on the path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then explicitly says, فَلَا تُطِعْ فَلَا تُطِعْ from ta'a, ta'a is to obey. Fala to tip. This comes in there as a as a command, the nahi uh, uh, to request that one does not do fala to tip al mukadibin kadhaba you kadhibu takdiban mukadibun kudhiba you kadhibu takdiban mukadibun. So takdib mukadibin are those who are continuously lying and denying. Fala to tip. كذب يكذب تو كذب is lies كذب is on the next level where they now even denying uh, reality denying what is true don't follow these types of people Rasulullah is directed to not follow in their path فلا تطيع المكذبين people that are, are, are not 
striving towards Allah, people that are not trying to bet their lives for the sake of Allah, people that are, are not on this wavelength, do not follow them. Now, imagine this. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa creation. He's getting wahi directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, directly from, from Jibreel alayhi salam. The Quran is being taught to him regularly. He's inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the things that are being taught to him. The, the mukaddib, the one that's continuously denying the reality, denying truth, denying um, or wanting to, to travel towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that those things realize, don't follow them. And so just a, a very quick a moment to pause here. Um, are there people like that in our lives? That's just on a different wavelength. That's on a different path. That's not interested in 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 in, in deen. That's not interested in in this. That lives a, a life contrary to what is expected from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Are those our friends? Are are we with them constantly? What are their actions like? Are we slowly but surely um, becoming like them? Are we slowly but surely doing things that they do? There are also some speaks about the friends that you keep and the company that we keep. And it gives a beautiful example of, of a person who goes and he goes to a, a someone who sells who sells atir. He sells he sells musk and uh, he speaks about the Rasulullah speaks about the person that is going there. Um, either you're going to you're going to come away from him with the fr- with, with the, the friend gifting you, he's gifting you some atir, so you go home with atir. Or there is a, a beneficial trade that happens that you purchasing it, so you're getting something beneficial and he's getting paid for it. Or if nothing else, just by being in his company, you're going to leave there. And you're going to have a, a beautiful smell because you are in surroundings of a beautiful smell. And then a person going, befriending the blacksmith. And this is again just by way of example. Rasa Sab says, either you're going to come out there and maybe some of the sparks went onto your clothing and your clothing is now going to be burnt a little bit. Or it's going to be a little bit black. Or if nothing else, you're going to leave there with a certain smell of smoke. You're going to leave there with a certain smell of smoke. The people that we are with affect us. Yes, we can have a positive effect on them as well. That is true. But understand that the words of Rasulullah are true. That we get affected with our company. You know, sometimes we have a certain standard, model standard, a certain way we speak. And when we are certain friends and they speak a certain way, then we start speaking that way as well. They have an effect on us. Very importantly, we need to look at the company that we keep. If it is that, inshallah, we can be of benefit them, then alhamdulillah, be of benefit to, to them. But do not continuously keep their company such that they have the effects. They have the effects are on, 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 on you. But this is more of a direct command. Don't follow those type of people. Well, we make the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just good company, good friends. Friends are going to remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Friends that are going, to, are going to keep us on that path. Yes, you can have fun. But again, everything done in the in the limits of the Sharia. We continue to the next um, set of verses. Okay. What do what do mawadda wadda ya wood 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 is like an intense love. So what do they desire? They have a, a, a very intense desire. Low to the hino. This word Tudhin from Duhan. Duhan, it's from its root letters, means like like uh, like it speaks about oil and then to apply a form of oil. Now, what what does oil got to do with this? Oil is, is very soft and and, and 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 changeable. You can take it from one container and just move it over to the next container and, and so on. So they wish and they have a firm desire that you are are like this where you just you soften up. Oil is nice and soft. You can wrap it onto you. That, that just goes with the flow. They wish that you soften up, that you go with the flow that you are, are easy. So that they can be soft and easy with you. This is like the compromise. 
one of the incidents where they 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 asked often the Rasulullah and they said, "We'll give you what what is it that you want? You want wealth? We'll give you all the wealth. We'll make you the richest amongst us here. You want ladies? We'll marry you to the the, the most beautiful la ladies that we have. Uh, leadership will will we'll, we'll make whatever it is, but just stop your promoting of Islam, the stain of Islam. Don't speak bad about our our gods. Just don't do this. Don't stop promoting Islam. And Rasul Sam says, if you give if you give the the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, meaning you give me the entire dunya. Uh, I'm not but stop doing what I do. This was the firmness of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is sometimes the firmness that we need. Very importantly, everything. Remember, we started the surah saying that Rasul Sam is on the best of character. So even when we're going to be stern, even when we're going to hold fast, even when we we're going to we're going to do what we need to do, it must be done in the most beautiful way. It must be done in such a way that we part and that person cannot say that no, but you know, they're trying to do good, but look at the, the character flaws and so on and so forth. Rasulullah was the best, had the best character. And that's what drew people to him. And eventually, over his entire journey, even more and more and more people embraced Islam. So they wish that this should happen, that you should soften up, that you should become easy, and so that you just give in, and then they will be easy with you. And that's a that's a nice compromise, isn't it? <laughs> you you take it easy, they then they take it easy. No more issues, no more fighting, no more nasty comments, none of the stuff. Isn't that the easy compromise? <laughs> you make it, you, you do what you need to do and then you do and everything goes easy. But the verse before this is, وَلَا um, um, Sorry. فَلَا تُطِعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Do not obey them. And the next verse after Allah says, that's what they wish. وَلَا تُطِعِ And do not obey كُلَّ every حَلَّاف Halaf is someone who's make, continuously making promises. Making promises all the time. I promise and I promise and I promise and I promise. And it's not good to continuously make, make, make promises. Because we know a person is not able to fulfill his promise and fulfill his oath. That's a sign of hypocrisy. Mahin, and this person is actually despised. Do not, so in between the two, the, the, the verse number nine, before verse number nine, do not obey. Verse number 10, again, do not obey. And in between the Allah says, this is what they wish. You become easy. You become soft. You become lenient. You just allow everything. Allah says, don't allow all of these things to happen. But I'm going to emphasize here that the surah starts out saying, Rasulullah is the best of character. So even when we are firm, even when we stand our ground, uh, this needs to be done in a beautiful way. We need to part the person that is having this negativity towards us and having difficulties on our decisions that we make for ourselves and our family, we still need to do it in a beautiful way. And we make our eyes all across this that strength. That's not always easy. A person is causing you harm, and a person is causing you harm, and a person is causing you harm. And you're just not supposed to, you know, go, go, go back. And a beautiful story of, of, of Nabi Ibrahim and uh, sorry, um, Nabi Muhammad Sassam and Abu Bakr and, and, and I'm paraphrasing yeah, I don't remember the, the exact wording but um, so Abu Bakr was sitting with Rasulullah and someone came to complain complaining, complaining, complaining and then the person left and he came back and complained and complained and complained and, and he left and he came back and he scolded and complained and eventually the third time after the third time Abu Bakr Rasulullah stood up and wanted to respond to this person and when that happened Rasulullah got up and he moved away and Abu Bakr went to Rasulullah and says, you know, this person was saying bad things and complaining all the time and you sat and you didn't do anything. And when you, when I stood up to respond and then you walked away, Rasulullah says, you know, whilst you were not saying anything to the Malaika, I'm making dua for you. And once you stood up, the Malaika left and Shaitan now came in. And he also didn't want to be present there with Shaitan. 
And so again, sometimes our responses can can invite shaitan and shaitan enrages us and, and respond in a, in, a, in a not so nice manner. So subhanAllah, this, the, this entire journey of ours is, is a journey of growth, is a journey of reformation, a journey where Allah puts people in, our, in, our, in, in front of us where we can just go crazy. And it's that time we need to, we need to hold fast. We need to pass away. Okay, take a moment, step back. I am the uh, nice, 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 uh, nice definition is giving to, to the word responsible. I am responsible. I'm response able. I'm able to respond. I am able. Responsible. I am able to respond. I can choose my response. This person is causing me harm, causing me difficult. This person saying this, this person saying that. I am able to respond. Even if you have to sort out the issue. Yes, sometimes the person needs to be, it needs to be made known that this person is doing wrong. I'm able to respond, responsible. You know, all, we, all, we all want to be called responsible. We all want to be termed responsible. No one wants to be called and be labeled as irresponsible, isn't it? If I call you irresponsible, it's not a very nice term to be labeled as. So all of us want to be responsible. What is responsible? Response, able. I'm able to respond. I'm able to choose my response. Subhanallah. So in every situation, remember this. I'm responsible. I'm able to respond. I'm able to respond. I'm able to choose my response. And step back. Allah has given us the ability to just step back and choose. And with this comes that growth. With that comes with this comes that character building. This process that we are going through is merely about the process of growth and reformation. So we understand it as that and move accordingly, inshallah. Uh, we will find now. Okay, time is up. We'll just conclude with um, the next verse, verse number 11. Hamaz, Hamaz, from the word Humaza, li kulli humazatin lumaza. Humaza is a backbiter. This person is backbiting all the time. Hamaz, Hamaz is on a, on a, on a scale of Mubalagha. So the person is continuously backbiting. Masha'in, Masha is to move around, to walk around, being a meme with tales or stories. So Humaza, Backbiting Lumaza in that story, who uh, sorry in the surah, Humaza, backbiting Lumaza, moving around and, and making up stories. Hamaz, um, backbiting Masha'in, moving around in a meme with stories and tales. Okay, this person continuously does that. Watch out that you are not in the company of a person that's always coming to you and saying, It's a That it's a It's absolutely not good for you. It's going to blacken your heart. In Imam Ghazali's Bidai to Lidai, says, be aware that you are thinking that you are not the one that's backbiting. Rather, you are only the listener. Rather, the listener is as guilty and attains the same sin as the, as the speaker because you are allowing it. So if you have a, if you have a friend that's always coming to you in Zekhawa, that is not the best of friends to have. You need to remind that person that that, that Yijekhawa is, is the last statement that you want to hear from them because it's bad for them and it's bad for you. Amazin, Masha'in, Pinamin. Manna'in, we'll conclude here. Manna'in, preventing lil khair, preventing goodness. Mu'tad, transgressing the limits. Athim, and Izay, Izay Sana. This entire context of here is choosing your company. Being with the right people, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa grants us good company. It's going to assist us on this journey that we are on, inshallah. We're going to conclude there. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa grant us a, a wonderful Ramadan, inshallah, filled with barakah and khayr, filled with lots of blessings and opportunity to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we be of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees our necks from the fire of Jahannam. May we be of those that attain the objective that we attain the objective of the month which is to, to adopt the quality of taqwa. Taqwa. Allah make us of the muttaqeen. Inna lil muttaqeen mafaza da. Muttaqeen are ultimately successful. And may we see the benefits and the rewards of this month of Ramadan. After the Ramadan, the rest of the year. More importantly, in the year after. I'm going to say shukran for the opportunity. Subhanallah bihamdihi. Subhanallah bihamdika. Ashari wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah. Before I log off, uh, are there any questions, uh, inshallah?